All right, maybe you have seen his videos on YouTube. They are called Abandoned from Above. This is Jason Allard. Hey, Jason. Hey, Will, how are you today? Good, good, thanks for being on with us. So I just wanted to let you know, I was on uh, Facebook uh, a while back and came across one of your videos about the Crook Point Bridge. And I, I clicked on it and it was so well done, just incredible. And for some reason, like every other Rhode Islander, I have been fascinated with that bridge. You know, for people who don't know, it's the bridge as you're going over 195 that you can see that's been stuck since 1976. But you put together an incredible video with some great history. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's one of those interesting things about Rhode Island, right, where it kind of blends into the background. You drive by it all the time. But a lot of these places, there's a lot of history here. So I think it's important to tell that history before they're either, you know, renovated, redeveloped, or in this case, demolished. Um, the state of Rhode Island is planning to demolish this sometime in the next five to six years. Um, I wasn't even aware that there was an abandoned tunnel going underneath the east side until I started to dig into it a little bit more. And then I realized, you know, this is one of those opportunities that I have to go and capture everything. Yeah, for, for years, I never knew that there was, there was a, that tunnel that went under the city of Providence till I watched your video. video. So, so how long does it take for you to, to put something together? And obviously, you did your homework when it came to researching this bridge. And everybody has a story about this bridge. Right. So usually I'm, I'm a one-man team. When I produce these videos, I'll bring a friend along with me sometimes to get backup footage or to spot the drone or spot me in case I don't fall into anything or walk into anything dangerous. Um, right. But yeah, Good idea, by from, the way. <laughs> right, yeah. So for, for end-to-end, -end, it takes about a month of production time from filming. Usually it takes about one to two weeks, depending on how many times I have to go back. This one was a little bit tricky because I want to get all the shots at sunset. So every night for about a week, I was going back to the bridge, back to the tunnel to capture all these different shots, all these different angles. And, you know, it turned into a pretty gorgeous video because of that. It really is. Yeah, it really is. So can you just give us just a, a brief history of that bridge? Because a lot of people, obviously, they see it all the time, but they may know nothing about it. Right. So it was originally built in the early 1900s to connect Union Station, which is in the center of Providence. It's actually still there. Mm -hmm. um, across the Seekonk River and to connect with routes going north and south. And then with, you know, train travel decreasing rapidly with the, like, with the invention of the automobile, obviously, right. you know, train travel decreased enough where it wasn't sustainable to have commuter rail on there. So then they removed that and then it was just um, for tra regular transport. And then eventually that decreased as well. And then it was abandoned in the 1970s. Now, it's been called a cultural icon in here, and I know you were saying even in, in the video, you said um, a few people have done even studies on the bridge, calling it a cultural icon here in the, in the state of Rhode Island. Yeah, that's one of the funny things about the bridge, right? Because here in Rhode Island, we refer to everything as where things used to be. Yes. So we have a very close connection with things that are abandoned or that aren't even there anymore. Mm -hmm. So when you see this bridge, like I said in the video, it's part of the Providence skyline at this point. You can't imagine it not being there. And some people might call it an eyesore, but me personally, I see beauty in the abandoned. So when I see that bridge, it's just a monument to a different time, a different era. And I think it's important that we preserve that history. Now, as you were saying before, there is a tunnel that goes from that bridge, uh, goes from the bridge, it goes all the way under the city of Providence. And then it was, it was boarded up. There's steel plates on the tunnel now. It's about a mile long because you said there was a giant uh, RISD party back in, in the 90s that happened there. And that's what forced the city to, to close it up. Lord only knows what's inside there. Yeah, it's about a mile long, completely empty right now, running under different apartments, different buildings that belong to RISD and Brown University. It was boarded up at either end after, it was called the RISD riot. It was really just a college party that kind of got out of hand in 1993. And then, you know, the city recognized that there is an inherent risk to having a giant abandoned tunnel running through the city. So then they boarded <laughs> up with corrugated steel to make sure that people can't get in there and party more. So today, it's still there. There's a train track running through the whole thing. Um, but access is difficult because, again, you can't get in at either side of the tunnel um, but there are access points. I've had people reach out to me since the video was released that there are access points leading from RISD in the basement of some of the buildings to get into wow. the tunnel. Wow, that is so cool. So your um, whole uh, video series is on YouTube and it's called Abandoned from Above. What is it about these abandoned places that, that you love? And have you ever gotten to a place and gone, you know, uh, this may not be such a good idea and been completely freaked out and hightailed it out pretty quick? 
Right. So to answer your, your second question first, I do extensive research before I go to any of these places. So I know what to expect. I know what the risk is and I know the history of these places and the stories that I want to tell. They're very interesting to me because they're basically time capsules, right? A lot of times when you want to learn about history, you read articles, you read books, you watch movies, recreations, but these places are still there and they're stuck in time. So it's basically like natural museums. So when you go there, you explore them and you piece the stories together and you can see exactly how they were the last day that they were open or the last day that they were in operation. And that's really interesting to me. So it's important that I'm able to explore them with respect and tell their stories in an accurate way. Well, man, I got to tell you, I loved the video you did just such an incredible job. And I've really loved the, uh, the series that you have on uh, YouTube as well. And we will post a link to the series and, uh, and your, uh, your website as well on our website. That is roadshow.com. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much, Will.